Plants in their green realms have a unique and special dietary needs. They require nutrients to support their growth and metabolic functions, where they obtain them from the soil in soluble form. Macronutrients, including carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, phosphorus, calcium, and magnesium, are essential in large quantities. On the flip side, plants also need micronutrients such as iron, manganese, copper, boron, chlorine, and molybdenum in trace amounts. Depending on the soil type, these nutrients may be abundant or lacking and can be made available to plants in the form of fertilizers. Interestingly, plants growing in soils lacking certain macronutrients, like nitrogen and phosphorus, have developed a clever strategy to acquire these nutrients. These plants are collectively known as carnivorous or insectivorous plants, and they have modified their leaves to capture insects and small animals. By digesting them, the plants obtain the macronutrients, primarily nitrogen, which are absent in the soil. This way, these plants can ultimately fulfill their nutrient requirements. Typically, carnivorous plants can have any of the following traps. An active snap trap that catches prey when triggered by brushing against its sensitive hairs. A passive lobster pot trap that ensnares prey with no chance of escape. A passive pitfall trap containing digestive fluid into which prey fall. A passive sticky trap where prey becomes stuck on the trap's hairs and a bladder trap that captures prey by pulling them in like a vacuum. So what are the examples of carnivorous plants, and what interesting biology and facts surround them? Stay tuned to find out. The Venus flytrap, belonging to the genus Dionea, is the first example of a carnivorous plant. This plant is scientifically named Dionea muscipula and falls under the category of flowering plants, distinguished by its small white flowers. While it obtains its energy through photosynthesis, its carnivorous nature helps it survive in nitrogen-deficient soils. This particular plant was first discovered in 1765 by John Bartram during his exploration of the American colonies, making it a center of attraction for earlier botanists. For instance, John Ellis undertook the description and naming of this plant, while Carl Linnaeus, astounded by its characteristics, deemed it a miracle of nature. The energy properties of the Venus flytrap leaves were later uncovered by John Scott Borden Sanderson in 1873. Beyond its botanical significance, the Venus flytrap holds cultural importance, being regarded as a magical plant in some societies. Legend has it that this plant possesses the power to attract love and provide spiritual protection. The association of this particular plant with the Roman goddess of love, Venus, is reflected in its name, adding to the mystique surrounding this captivating carnivorous plant. The Venus flytrap can be found in the wild or as a potted plant. Growing a Venus flytrap as a potted plant is highly preferred since it is much easier to maintain than collecting one from the wild. Some of its growth requirements include keeping the soil moist and watering it using distilled or rainwater, while avoiding tap water as it has been shown to harm the plant. In their natural habitat, Venus flytraps thrive in damp or boggy acidic soils that are poor in nutrients, particularly nitrogen. You can easily find these plants in North and South Carolina, as well as in other states such as Florida and New Jersey. With the current rise of technology and online shopping, Venus flytraps have successfully been introduced to various parts of the world as potted plants. And what does the anatomy of the Venus flytrap look like? This plant features fairly long, fibrous roots, ranging from 10 to 15 centimeters in length. Growing in a rosette formation, marked by a circular arrangement of leaves, the mature plant's diameter typically falls within the range of 10 to 14 centimeters. Also, these plants have a white, fleshy, elongated underground stem, known as a rhizome, which annually increases in size and serves as the point from which its leaves emerge. Its leaves are usually green, 
measuring up to 12 centimeters in length and consisting of two main parts, the leaf stalk or stem and the leaf blade, commonly referred to as the trap. The trap of the Venus flytrap comprises two hinged leaf blades, forming two halves connected by a midrib. These blades remain open at an angle of 40, 60 degrees until prey land on the trap. Depending on the amount of sunlight the plant receives, the color inside the trap may vary, appearing as bright red, pale yellow, or green. The trap can measure up to 3 centimeters in length, and a Venus flytrap may have 4. Seven stalks with traps, with new traps typically emerging between March and October. The edge of each blade features numerous spike-like structures called guard hairs, which interlock when the trap closes. Just beneath these guard hairs are numerous tiny nectar glands, secreting a sweet-smelling sap that attracts insects. The inside of the blade is equipped with trigger hairs known as trichromes, causing the trap to snap shut when touched simultaneously within 20 seconds. Also, the inside of the blade houses numerous digestive glands that secrete digestive fluids and enzymes. These enzymes aid in digesting the trapped prey, and the nutrients get absorbed at the base of the digestive glands. Once prey is trapped inside the leaf blades, the leaf secretes enzymes that kill and digest the prey. After digestion is complete, the Venus flytrap leaf blades typically open, releasing undigested remains such as exoskeletons. The insects and arachnids most commonly captured by these plants include ants, flying insects, grasshoppers, beetles and spiders. Notably, the flowers of a Venus flytrap plant arise from a flowering stem, also known as scape, that ranges from 1 to 30 centimeters in length. The flowers exhibit various lines of symmetry, appearing radially symmetrical and thus actinomorphic. They feature white petals comprised of green veins along their length. Venus flytrap flowers are relatively small, with a diameter ranging between 1 and 1.5 centimeters. Following fertilization, these flowers produce tiny, pear-shaped black seeds, a process that usually takes 1.5 to 2 months to complete. Lastly, here are some cool Venus flytrap facts. They are perennial plants with a slow growth rate taking about 3, 4 years for the plant to flower, and can live for over two years, blooming annually. Some Venus flytraps can live for 20 years or more, with the oldest reaching nearly 25 years. According to the Guinness World Record, the largest Venus flytrap trap measures 6.1 centimeters in length and belongs to a plant named Alien. Each trap on a Venus flytrap plant can capture prey three to five times only. Afterward, the trap gets into photosynthesis mode for a few months before eventually dying and falling off the plant. Another example of carnivorous plants is the fascinating pitcher plant. Pitcher plants belong to plant genera whose leaves have evolved into hollow structures, functioning as traps to capture prey. These hollow vessels are commonly known as pitchers, and their color, shape, and distinctive features vary among different genera. Common pitcher plants can be found in the genera Saracenia, Nepenthes, Cephalotus, and Darlingtonia. Pitcher plants in the Saracenia genus were already familiar to Native Americans long before the Europeans explored the region in the early 1500s. These plants are native to North America and are predominantly found in swamps, bogs, and low wetlands. Within the Saracenia genus, there are several species, including the northern pitcher plant, southern pitcher plant, yellow trumpet, pale pitcher plant, green pitcher plant, sweet pitcher plant, white-topped pitcher plant, and parrot pitcher plant. Saracenia plants are essentially perennial rosettes of leaves transformed into traps, emerging from long rhizomes, underground stems, with fibrous roots. These plants boast highly decorative and conspicuous trap leaves, resembling elongated funnels. At the top of their trap is an immobile lobe, commonly referred to as a lid or hood, 
accompanied by an additional flattened wing-like lobe on their leaves. The brightly colored traps, coupled with secreted nectar, serve to lure and entrap prey. The stiff downward-directed hairs lining the lid of the plant trap play a crucial role in encouraging the descent and discouraging the ascent of prey. Upon reaching the brink of the pitcher mouth or the underside of the lid, the prey often overextends its footing and tumbles in. The upper one-third to one-half of the pitcher's interior is coated with a smooth plant wax, hindering footing and creating an environment where flight is seldom possible. Deeper into the pitcher, the absence of waxy cuticle allows for the absorption of digestive products, with a downward-directed intermesh of hairs further preventing escape. All Saracenia species feature digestive glands capable of secreting protein-digesting enzymes and various fluids with different concentrations. Pitchers that secrete enzymes typically have a small quantity present in their fluids before entrapment, and the enzyme concentration tends to increase after the initial stages of digestion and absorption. Notably, the effectiveness of the pitcher plant's trap varies according to its habitus and species. Erect traps are particularly efficient, often filling to the point where excess insects can freely enter or exit. In contrast, some species with widely flaring and reclining pitchers appear less effective, leading to the theory that this type of trap may drown its victims. The digestive mixtures within the pitcher are not universally effective, and certain protozoa and insect larvae have adaptations that resist digestion, providing them with a space to breed within the pitcher. Consequently, the contents of the pitcher form a complex ecosystem comprising algae, fungi, bacteria, protozoa, other microbes, and various resistant insect larvae. Now shall we briefly touch on other genera of pitcher plants? Nepenthes plants are prevalent in Madagascar, the Seychelles Islands, northeastern Australia, and the Malayan archipelago. They feature two types of pitchers, one on the upper side of the plant and another on the lower, with traps often resembling phallic objects. Meanwhile, Darlington plants, exemplified by the California pitcher plant, are commonly found in Australia. Another example is the Cephalotus plant, known as the Australian pitcher plant. Another example of carnivorous plants is the sundew, belonging to the genus Drosera. These perennial herbaceous plants sometimes undergo an annual cycle, reappearing through seed germination in the following season. Sundews can be found in mountain and coastal bogs from the Pacific Northwest into Northern California, as well as in various bog locations throughout the eastern third to half of North America. Sundew plants feature fibrous roots, a rosette pattern, and a stem of varying length. Their leaves, produced continuously throughout the season, consist of two parts, a leaf stem and a terminal blade modified into a trap adorned with numerous stalked glands, primarily on the upper surface. These glands, brightly red, secrete a substance resembling dewdrops, creating a glistening effect on the leaf blade. There are two types of glands, peripheral glands, mainly involved in entrapment, and central glands, responsible for both entrapment and the secretion of digestive fluids. The coloration and sweet nectar secretions of the glands attract small insects and other prey to the trap leaves. Upon landing or crawling onto the sundew leaf, the prey becomes ensnared in the sticky secretions, while the stalks of the peripheral glands slowly bend toward the center of the leaf, securing the prey in the digestive area of the sessile glands. Common species of sundew plants include Drosera filiformis, Drosera linearis, Drosera rotundifolia, Drosera linearis, and Drosera anglica. Butterworts belonging to the genus Pinguicula offer another intriguing example of carnivorous plants. Widely distributed across the northern half of North America, extending into the coastal plain in the southeast and northern California in the west, these plants form rosettes with stalkless, thin leaves. The leaves are elongated and narrow with blunt ends, 
adorned with tiny glands that create a fine pebbled texture. Butterworts come in either pale yellow-green or red hues and boast brittle, fibrous roots. These plants employ a relatively simple trapping mechanism. When a prey lands or crawls on the upper surface of the leaf, it becomes ensnared in the glandular secretions and is held fast until digestion and absorption take place. Bladderwort leaves typically feature two types of glands on their upper surface. Sessile glands, responsible for prey digestion, and stalked glands, crucial for capturing the prey. Absorption occurs at the base of the digestive glands. Common species of butterworts include Pinguicula vulgaris, Pinguicula pumila, Pinguicula lutea, Pinguicula chiarulea, Pinguicula viosa, and Pinguicula planifolia. Bladderworts, belonging to the genus Utricularia, stand as another intriguing example of carnivorous plants. However, compared to other genera of carnivorous plants, our understanding of the taxonomy, biology, and range boundaries of bladderworts is less comprehensive. As of now, no botanical monographs exist to provide a thorough examination of bladderworts, particularly the American species. Bladderworts exhibit both aquatic and terrestrial forms and can be found inhabiting North America. The aquatic varieties appear as strands or mats of plants floating in quiet, acidic ponds and bog-associated waters. On the other hand, terrestrial bladderworts grow in damp, sandy, acidic soils, with the primary parts of the plants at or below ground level. Bladderworts feature a rootless, branching, green or brown stem that gives rise to whorls of finer green branches, sometimes divided and almost feathery typically bearing tiny bulbous traps. Technically, the traps are the leaves, but the ones that pop up without traps have been called leaves, photosynthetic organs, or just branches. Now, these traps, or bladders, aren't your regular leaves. They've got this bulbous shape and hang out on the finer branches, attached by a narrow, flattened, pointed, green leaf-like thing. This leaf-like structure pops up from the stem or the base of the scape, adding to the cool design of these bladderwort plants. Briefly, here's how the bladderwort trap does its thing. At one end, there's a small opening surrounded by lots of plant hairs. Picture it like a door. There's a bigger upper hinged part called the door and a smaller veil of tissue below it called the vellum. The door is kind of sealed with a thin layer of mucilage. The trap has these cool four-pointed glands on its interior walls. Now, during chill time, the trap absorbs some fluid, creating a negative suction pressure inside. This pressure is like a trap waiting to spring. It all goes down when something brushes against the sensitive trigger hairs, or when the trap gets a serious disturbance. The hairs get stimulated, and it's like an electrical party that causes the door to flip back inside due to the suction force. The opening sucks in water along with the unsuspecting prey, and then the door shuts. No escape. The trap resets over 15 to 30 minutes, absorbing water again and recreating that negative suction pressure. After a few days, the enzymes from the cool, four-pointed glands digest the prey. If the trap is big enough for the negative pressure, it might snag another victim before fully finishing the first one. The whole trapping process is super speedy, estimated at 0.002 of a second. Too quick for even the fanciest slow motion cameras. Lift these bladder words from the water and you might hear a faint crackling as the trap snaps shut. Usually, bladder words go for small prey like tiny water insects, protozoans, crustaceans, rotifers, little tadpoles and mosquito larvae. If the prey is too big for the trap, bladderworts digest it bit by bit, depending on which part got caught first. Examples of bladderworts include Utricularia olivacea, Utricularia purpurea, Utricularia simulans, Utricularia cornuta, and Utricularia giba. And with that, we come to the end of this video. Thank you for watching and your continued support. See you in the next one.